Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss the gross anatomy of the cervical plexus. So what is cervical plexus? Cervical plexus is a somatic plexus. Cervical plexus is a somatic plexus, somatic nerve plexus formed by the ventral rami of the ventral or anterior rami of the C1, C2, C1, C2, C3 and C4 spinal nerves. So this is a somatic nerve plexus formed by the ventral rami of the cervical 1, cervical 2, cervical 3 and cervical 4 spinal nerves. Okay. So we got the definition of the cervical plexus. Location. Location. It is located in the neck in relationship to that of the C1, C2, C3, C4, it is related posteriorly to the levator scapulae and scalene muscle, medius muscle. Anteriorly, it is related to the pre-vertebral fascia and, far, and internal jugular vein as well as the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, what is its relationship? Relation of the cervical plexus posteriorly posteriorly it is related to the levator scapulae and scalene medius. Okay. Levator scapulae muscle and scalene medius muscle. Okay, and scalene medius. Anteriorly, it is related to the pre vertebral fascia. Pre vertebral it is related to the periodical fascia, internal jugular vein, internal jugular vein, and sternocleidomastoid muscle, sternum. Cleido mastoid muscle. So you got the idea where it is located. So what are the branches of the of the cervical plexus? We have muscular branches, cutaneous branches. We have uh, we have the formation of the phrenic nerve from the cervical plexus and we have nerve supply to the strap muscles or infrahyoid muscles and also we have contribution to the to the innervation of the nerves of the neck by means of the cervical plexus so formation if we go to the formation we look at the image here that is formed by C1, C2, C3, C4. Okay, that forms the cervical plexus. 
C5 may contribute in the cervical plexus, some book accept that. Okay, I will say C1, C2, C3, C4. That, that these are the nerves for the cervical plexus. So if we go to the C1, then we get C1 here is contributing here in the formation of cervical plexus, and this is the hypoglossal nerve. Okay. This is hypoglossal nerve, hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is not a part of the cervical plexus. Hypo through the hypoglossal nerve, C1 passes forward in a common fibrous sheet here for the C1 and C1 contribute to the innervation of two muscles, okay, one is genohyoid muscle, here, this is the genohyoid muscle, this is the genohyoid muscle, and that is the thyrohyoid muscle, this muscle is the, this is the genohyoid muscle, this is the thyrohyoid muscle, thyrohyoid muscle, okay. And from the C1, we'll get a loop going down, going down, okay. So that is the, this is, that is the superior root of the ansa cervicalis. This is the ansa cervicalis here, this loop. This loop is formed by contribution from C1, contribution from C2, contribution from C3. So this is the loop, the descending loop or the superior loop of the ansa cervicalis. We call it descendants hypoglossy. So this is the superior, superior, superior root of the ansa cervicalis, superior root of the this is the ansa cervicalis cervicalis that is this this is the ansa cervicalis it is formed by c1 c2 c3 okay and the superior root is also called descendants hypoglossy another name is descendants hypoglossy Okay, so that is the superior root. Okay, then from the superior root, we'll get innervation to a muscle called the superior belly of the homohyoid. Superior belly of the homohyoid muscle. Homohyoid muscle. Okay, you got that. Then it goes down. And it forms the inferior root. This is the inferior root. Inferior root. This another name is descendants cervicalis. Descendants cervicalis. Cervicalis. Okay. So we get from here. This is the this. This from here will get the innervation to the inferior, inferior belly, inferior belly of the homohyoid muscle. Innervation to the inferior belly of the homohyoid, innervation to the superior belly of the homohyoid by means of ansa cervicalis, the, the descendants hypoglossy innervates the superior belly of homohyoid. The descendant cervicalis innervates the inferior belly of the homohyoid muscle. Homohyoid muscle. Okay. From this bottom part of the loop here, we we'll get innervation to two more muscles. One is the sternothyroid and that is sternohyoid muscle. Okay. So from here, we'll get two muscle innervation. One is 
sternohyoid, 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 and this is actually sternothyroid, 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 and that is the sternohyoid muscle. Sternohyoid muscle. Okay, we got sternohyoid. Okay, so innervation of the sternohyoid, sternothyroid, superior belly of the omohyoid, inferior belly of the omohyoid by means of the loop of the ansa cervicalis. So, what is ansa cervicalis? Ansa cervicalis is a loop of the nerve formed by the C1. C2, C3. What muscles are innervated by the ansa cervicalis? It is innervated. It, it, it innervates the superior belly of the omohyoid, the sternothyroid, sternohyoid, inferior belly of the omohyoid. What is the location of ansa cervicalis? Ansa cervicalis is located on the wall of the carotid sheath. Okay. This is not a content of carotid sheath. It is over the wall of the carotid sheath. Okay. Located over the located over the carotid sheath. Carotid. Carotid sheath. Okay. We got the ansa cervicalis. Okay. So from cervical plexus, we'll also get cutaneous innervation. That is very important to us. So cutaneous innervation. Okay, so again, you would like to summarize ansa cervicalis. It innervates the infrahyoid muscle mostly, the strep muscle. Okay, it this, but thyrohyoid is not getting innervation from the ansa cervicalis. Thyrohyoid is getting innervation directly from C1 that passes via the hypoglossal nerve, but it is getting innervation from C1, not from hypoglossal nerve. This is just a close contact between hypoglossal nerve and the C1 by a fibrous sheet. Okay, so the C1 also contributes in the formation of the genohyoid, that is a suprahyoid muscle. Okay. We know that other suprahyoid muscles, all of them are innervated by the cranial nerves, like the, the mylohyoid, like the digestive. They are innervated by the, by the cranial nerves. Exception is the genuhyoid innervated by C1. Okay. The thyrohyoid muscle, thyrohyoid muscle, it is infra, infrahyoid muscle. Okay, because it is below the hyoid bone. Okay, the, this muscle is not innervated by the ansa cervicalis. It is innervated by the C1. You have to remember that. Okay, we got the ansa cervicalis. Now we go to the cutaneous innervation of the cervical plexus. Cutaneous innervation. Okay. Okay, the cervical nerve has very much rich cutaneous contribution to the head and neck region, to the supraclavicular region, as well as the shoulder region, up to the upper chest, okay, to the skull. Okay, so we'll go through that. So if you draw a sternocleidomastoid muscle, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. From the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, we get the we get the cutaneous innervation of the cervical plexus. So this is the muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. So if you go to the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, we'll get the cutaneous branches. Okay. We'll get the cutaneous branch like the lesser occipital nerve. This is the lesser occipital nerve. 
occipital nerve. This is the okay. This is the lesser occipital nerve. This is the lesser occipital occipital nerve. Okay, we got that. Then we'll get the and its root value is C two. Lesser occipital nerve is its root value is C two. Then we'll get the we'll get the great auricular nerve okay great auricular nerve great auricular nerve root value is c2 c3 c2 c3 this is the great auricular nerve great auricular nerve okay great auricular nerve root value is c2 c3 this is the great auricular nerve this is the great auricular nerve auricular nerve okay we got that and the great auricular nerve is going to the lower part of the auricle it pick up sensation from the from the skin on both anterior and posterior part of the auricle including the skin over the parotid gland okay so including part of the scalp over the mastoid process lesser occipital nerve actually pick up sensation this is sensory nerve between the mastoid process and the external occipital protuberance the part of the of the scalp okay so great auricular nerve around the auricle both anterior and posterior part of the auricle lower part of the skull over the parotid gland skin from the parotid gland up to the mastoid process from mastoid process to the external occipital protuberance the skull skin sensation is carried by the lesser occipital nerve its root value is c2 great auricular nerve root value c2 c3 we have another nerve that is the the that is called transverse cervical nerve or transverse anterior nerve okay this transverse cervical nerve transverse cervical nerve okay its root value is again c2 c3 this is the transverse cervical nerve that is the transverse cervical nerve transverse cervical nerve and root value is c2 c3 okay we got that root value c2 c3 it pick up sensation from the anterior part of the neck okay it has two branches it goes up one branch one branch goes down and it pick up sensation from the anterolateral and anterior part of the neck okay that is the transverse cervical nerve also called the transverse anterior nerve of the neck okay we got the transverse cervical nerve so we get another nerve that is called supraclavicular nerve this is the supraclavicular nerve supra clavicular nerve okay and its root value is c3 c4 c3 and c4 it pick up sensation from the clavicle up to the second rib from the shoulder okay so that is the supra clavicular nerve that is supra clavicular nerve okay all of them all of them actually come out from this part from this part posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle so this area is called nerve point nerve point okay so they come very close together so any any type of surgery any type of surgery in the neck we may put some local anesthesia there with some caution certainly because we have also another nerve very close that is the phrenic nerve we'll go there 
So these are the cutaneous nerves. Let us summarize the cutaneous nerve. We have the lesser occipital nerve root value C2. We have the great auricular nerve root value C2, C3. We have the transverse cervical nerve root value C3, C4. Okay. We have the transverse cervical nerve root value C2, C3. We have the supraclavicular nerve that has that we have the supraclavicular nerve that has the root value C3, C4. So let's talk about nerve C2. The great auricular nerve C2, C3. The transverse cervical nerve C2, C3. Supraclavicular nerve C3, C4. Okay. We got the cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus. We have four cutaneous nerve here. Okay, we got that. Then we'll get another important nerve that is called the, the phrenic nerve. This is the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve. Okay, phrenic nerve. And its root value is C3, C4, okay, C3, C4, and C5, okay. Sometimes C5 has very big contribution. Sometimes C5 has very big contrib contrib contribution, okay. We call it the accessory phrenic nerve. And the accessory phrenic nerve is a nerve that may go via the nerve to the subclavius muscle. Okay, the phrenic nerve is a very important nerve that is coming from C3, C4, C5. Okay, phrenic nerve is a contribution from the cervical plexus, is a branch of cervical plexus. And phrenic nerve in our very multiple structure, we know that it in our base D diaphragm. The fibrous pericardium, okay, it innervates the diaphragm. The fibrous pericardium, also the mediastinal pleura, mediastinal pleura, okay, we got the area of distribution of the phrenic nerve. Okay. We have some other contribution from the cervical plexus. Here we are seeing a nerve. This is called the accessory nerve. Accessory nerve. Okay. There is the 11 cranial nerve. Accessory nerve. That is the 11th cranial nerve. CN. Okay. This 11th cranial nerve. It get contribution from C2, C3, C4, okay, gets contribution from C2, C3, and C4, okay, we got that. Now, our cervical plexus roots are also associated and loops, loops and roots are associated with innervation to the muscles of the neck. So suppose from C1 to C2, we have a nerve root that innervates the rectus capita, capitis lateralis, longus capitis and rectus capitis anterior. Okay. So we got that here from here. Okay. And this is one, this is, this will communicate with the vagus nerve. This is an anastomotic branch, anastomotic branch to the vagus nerve. Okay, from this part, from this part of the loop. And these two, these three are the rectus capitis lateralis, rectus capitis lateralis.
then we have the longus capitis this is longus capitis longus capitis from this loop c1 to c2 capitis then we'll get rectus capitis anterior so this three one two three rectus capitis one two three here rectus capitis lateralis longus capitis rectus capitis anterior and this is another twig going to communicate with that of the vagus nerve okay we got that so we have other contribution suppose from here we got that from c2 to c3 we have contribution to longus capitis and longus coli okay from c2 to c3 so we get contribution to longus capitis and longus coli okay longus capitis longus coli we have contribution from the loop between c3 c4 scalene mass on the levator scapulae so the contribution from c3 and c4 to the scalene mass scalene mass and the levator scapulae and the levator scapulae okay it is a somatic nerve plexus but it also get the gray rami communicants from the the roots get gray rami communicants from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion okay so this roots cervical plexus roots get gray rami communicants gray rami communicants gray rami communicants can piece from the superior cervical Sympathetic ganglion. Okay, we got that. So we got the cervical plexus formed by the C1, C2, C3, and C4. And this is a somatic nerve plexus. It has muscular branches, specifically with the ansa cervicalis and also from the C1 directly without ansa cervicalis. It has cutaneous branches. It forms in the, it is, it, it is, it produces or it makes the phrenic nerve, very important nerve, okay. And from the loop of nerves between its roots, we get nerve supply to the muscles of the neck, okay. We got that. Now we'll go through some of the clinical notes, okay. And you have to know that the accessory nerve getting contribution from C2, C3, C4. Okay, idea is that accessory nerve is a motor nerve to the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscle. So it is also sensory component for proprioception. We're getting C2, C3, C4. Okay, that is for proprioception. Okay, of the of the accessory not the proprioception, proprioception or position sense function okay now we'll go to some of the clinical notes okay so in the our clinical notes important point is the phrenic nerve Phrenic nerve is sometimes anesthetized or clumped or crushed to do some surgery in the lung as well as to repair the repair the 
diaphragmatic hernia okay is anesthetized or crushed to perform surgery in the lungs and to repair repair diaphragmatic hernia diaphragmatic tic hernia okay so this is the way so phrenic nerve if we anesthetize or clump the phrenic nerve then the particular side of the diaphragm would not move because phrenic nerve is the chief muscle of inspiration so the diaphragm would be paralyzed so we we'll call it hemi diaphragm okay that is induced by this procedure hemi diaphragm Okay, this is one, one clinical importance of phrenic nerve and some type of some types of hemi diaphragm is done to do some surgery in the lung and also to repair the diaphragmatic hernia. Okay. Another point is that we need to block the cervical plexus. Block the cervical plexus cervical plexus by injecting local anesthesia in the nerve point nerve point suppose we have just discussed posterior border of the center of the mastoid muscle around the midway we have multiple Cutaneous innervation like that of lateral occipital, great auricular, we have the anterior or transverse cervical, supraclavicular nerve. If we can inject local anesthesia here, we may do some surgery in those places by, by injecting the nerve point. Okay, so these are the clinical importances of significance in terms of cervical plexus. So if you like my video, please subscribe my channel. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me and please share the information with your friends. Have a nice day. Bye now.